Kevin Raposo here with speedyphotographer.com. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the three different types of photography software that you can use and my complete editing workflow from beginning to end. After watching this video, you should know exactly what you need in order to get started with editing your pictures. If you need something specific, concepts and times are up on screen. So photography software can fall under one of three categories, ingest and culling, editing, and backup software. Let's start by looking at ingest and culling software. This is software designed to help you get your pictures off your memory card and onto your computer. It can also help with file management, image tagging, and very basic editing tasks. For example, you can use ingest and culling software to automatically rename all of your images and tag them with copyright information while they're being transferred to your machine. Two of the most popular ingest and culling softwares are Photo Mechanic and Adobe Bridge. Photo Mechanic is a standalone piece of software while Adobe Bridge is included as part of the Adobe Creative Suite. One other popular and cheaper alternative is Fast Raw Viewer, which covers about 90% of the same functionality. All of these programs cost money, which leads me to a popular question. Why would you pay for culling and ingesting software when you can just use your editing software? There are two huge reasons. Number one, Photo Mechanic can load preview files instantly. In the same amount of time it takes me to zoom into 100% in Lightroom, I can cycle through an entire album in Photo Mechanic. And it's not like I don't have a powerful enough computer for Lightroom. I'm using a custom built desktop machine for this example. It makes it so much easier for me to filter through my pictures and tag what I actually want before bringing them into my editing software for processing. Reason number two, Photo Mechanic can automatically apply file naming conventions using variables, metadata, and copyright information while ingesting. This is how I managed to optimize all of my images for my website, helping me to increase my page ranking and land on the first page of Google search results. Not only that, but as a sports photographer, I'm also required to tag every single one of my images with a basic image description and metadata before submitting it. And Photo Mechanic allows me to set this up ahead of time and completely automate the process. All right, so the second type of photography software is used for editing. This is the software designed to help you with the creative part of your photography, adjusting color, contrast, saturation, and everything else. And as I just mentioned, editing software will also include some basic ingest and culling features, but nothing as fast as a tool like Photo Mechanic or Adobe Bridge. Two of the most popular editing softwares are Adobe Lightroom and Capture One. Capture One is a standalone piece of software while Lightroom is included as part of the Adobe Creative Suite. Now hold on, some of you are thinking, what about Adobe Photoshop? One of the common misconceptions when it comes to photography is that you need to be using Photoshop to edit your images. But the reality is that you should only be using Photoshop in very specific situations. And this is because of the difference between pixel and parametric editing software. Let me explain what this means by comparing Lightroom to Photoshop. Lightroom is a parametric photo editor. When I increase the exposure of my picture by plus 1.5, Lightroom records this as an instruction, but the original file stays the same. I can close Lightroom completely, come back to it later, and reset my exposure just by undoing it. This is called a non-destructive edit. Now Photoshop, on the other hand, is a pixel photo editor. When I increase the exposure of my picture by plus 1.5, Photoshop applies that adjustment directly to the image. If I want to close Photoshop, I have to save the image and fully commit to that change. This means if I open Photoshop later, I can't reset the exposure by undoing it. This is called a destructive edit. And when it comes to photography, it makes more sense to use a parametric editor like Lightroom for most of your editing because it means that you can easily change your mind later, which most of us do. The only disadvantage of a parametric editor is that it takes a lot longer to process the changes you make as you begin to stack your adjustments. Again, let me explain what that means. In Lightroom, every adjustment is an instruction. So if I change my exposure by plus 1.5 and then I add plus 50 to the shadows, those are two separate instructions that Lightroom has to process. And as the number of instructions goes goes up to 10, 20, or more, more computer power is going to be needed. But in Photoshop, every adjustment is independent. This means it takes much less time. If I change my exposure by plus 1.5, that change is immediately processed and applied to the image. So if I then go and add plus 50 to the shadows, the exposure does not have to be processed again because it's already been baked into the shot. So when does it make sense to use a pixel editor like Photoshop? There are two situations. When you have a standardized set of instructions you want to apply, or when you need to make more advanced edits to your picture. For example, if I know that I want to add plus 20 to the shadows of every single picture, Photoshop can take care of this a lot more quickly than Lightroom can. Or if I want to add text, replace backgrounds, or apply effects to my shot, only Photoshop has the tools that I need to pull this off. It all comes down to understanding the strengths and weaknesses of each program. For editing most of your pictures, Lightroom is the better choice. But for repetitive tasks or complex edits, use Photoshop. Lightroom even comes built in with an option to export your images to Photoshop.
Photoshop for processing, as you'll see in this menu. Finally, the third type of photography software is used for backups. I'm going to assume you understand the difference between a local, a remote, and an offsite backup. This is something we talk about inside the Speedy Photographer course. The simple piece of backup software can really help you to keep your work safe without any extra effort. Let me go through some of the options you can choose from, moving from beginner all the way up to advanced. Google Drive and Dropbox are a good free starting point if you have no other software subscriptions and you're working with a very small number of pictures. These provide offsite backups that automatically copy files from a folder on your computer to Google Drive and Dropbox servers. So the only thing you need to do is install the Google Drive or the Dropbox program on your computer and then copy your work to the folder you set up. The rest is automatic. Warning though, both of these are file sharing services. They are not designed to protect your information. They're designed to keep it up to date and shared with others. If you delete a picture on your computer, you're also deleting it from the Google Drive or the Dropbox servers, so you really have to be careful if you plan to use these. Personally, I only use these two programs to deliver the final images to my clients. For actual backups, I recommend the next step up, which brings me to Crash Plan and Backblaze. If you're looking to keep a large library of pictures safe, then these are the tools for you. Both Crash Plan and Backblaze charge a monthly fee, but they offer unlimited and automatic offsite storage of your computer. You can even keep a file history that allows you to restore older versions of your files. At the time of making this video, file history is completely free with Crash Plan. With Backblaze, there is a small fee you have to pay depending on the amount of information you have. The final and highest step up, in my opinion, is GoodSync. This is a completely customizable software that allows you to control every aspect of your file backups. For example, I can set a directory on my computer to synchronize with the hard drive that I have connected to it, or with another computer, or with an FTP server. It can be complicated to set up, but GoodSync gives you complete control over every file transfer that you need to make. I use it in combination with Backblaze to automatically create local, remote, and off-site backups of my pictures. So now that you understand the software you can choose from, let me walk you through my workflow from start to finish. I'm not going to get into detail here when it comes to each program. There are more specific videos covering that. This is just meant to be an overview of how I have things structured. All right, so when I get home after a shoot, I connect my memory card to my computer using one of my two card readers, depending on which camera I used. I have Windows set up to automatically open Photo Mechanic when I connect a memory card if it isn't already open. In Photo Mechanic, the first thing that comes up is the ingest window. I have this set up under Edit, Preferences, General, and then select Show Ingest Disks Dialog. From the ingest window, I choose which memory card I want to copy from, where I want to copy to, how I want each file to be named, and if I want any metadata to be applied to each file. To help make this as simple as possible, I have a hard drive on my computer completely dedicated to my projects. And on this hard drive, I have separate folders for my photo and video work and then subfolders for each individual year that the work was completed. My ingest presets and photo mechanic are set to automatically copy new pictures to a dated subfolder under the current year. So this means the file structure ends up looking exactly like this. So once I'm ready, I hit the ingest button and my pictures begin copying to my computer. While this is happening, I double click on the first picture and I begin scrolling through them in the photo mechanic preview window. I hit the T button to tag the ones that I want to keep and I have photo mechanic set up to automatically advance to the next picture after I tag anything. If I want to crop any of the pictures, which is a lot faster to do here than it is in Lightroom, I hit C to bring up the cropping tool and then I choose one of my aspect ratio presets. Once I'm finished, I close the preview window in Photo Mechanic and then I hit Control T on Windows or Command T on a Mac to select all of the tagged images. Next, I open Lightroom and I choose Library, then Import. I drag all of the tagged pictures I already selected in Photo Mechanic into this window. No, you can't just copy and paste them, you have to manually drag them. So drag and drop, I set my build previews to minimal and if I'm in a real hurry, I choose a preset that I want to apply to my pictures by selecting it under develop settings. Now the fun part, I make all of my edits in Lightroom and when I'm ready to export, I hit Control Shift E or Command Shift E on a Mac to open the export dialog box. Here I have different export presets depending on who I'm working for and how they've requested I deliver the images. And the only real difference between any of them is the quality. I have a full resolution, a high resolution, and a web resolution preset. A lot of my clients are happy to receive their final product through Google Drive. And so to be as efficient as possible, I export directly to the Google Drive folder on my computer, which is set up to begin syncing and uploading the pictures as they're dumped out of Lightroom. You can download and use the standard Google Drive program that Google has, but I actually prefer a paid software called InSync, which helps me to handle this. I find it's more flexible with supporting multiple Google Drive accounts. So now while the pictures are exporting from Lightroom and uploading to Google Drive at the same time, I head over to InSync and I generate a shared link to the folder for my client by clicking share and choosing 
anyone with the link. I open a new email and I paste this link in. Then I use the permanent clipboard plugin for Google Chrome to copy a pre-written template that I use when I'm delivering images to my clients. I just click, paste it into my email. I finish up by adding a subject line, my client's name and their email address. Then I head over to Lightroom and I check on the status of my export. At this point, it's usually pretty close to done and uploaded. I double check that everything worked out correctly and I hit send on the email. The final step to this workflow is archiving my old pictures. As my drive fills up, I copy the older years to my archive drives, which are actually just hard drives that I keep in a fireproof safe next to my desk. I connect these drives to my desktop computer using a drive reader. And just to add one more layer of security to the whole process, I also synchronize the archive drives with Backblaze by connecting them to my computer once every year. With file history turned on, this means I have all of my historical data protected until the end of time. Now, one question I do get asked about this workflow, how does it change when I'm editing with my laptop? The answer is it doesn't. I use the exact same settings in Photo Mechanic and Lightroom on my laptop. You can actually export your settings from Photo Mechanic by going to Edit, then Preferences, then Export. And then you do the same thing to import them on your laptop. And when it comes to Lightroom, I upload my library files to Google Drive, so the most recent version stays synchronized on both of my computers. As you can tell, I'm a bit obsessed with efficiency, and I blame it on being a sports photographer in a high pressure environment. But if you have more time to work with, and I know many of you will, you can easily adjust this workflow to give yourself more time to be creative. The key to a good workflow, no matter what it is, is just not wasting any time. There's nothing wrong with taking a bit more time to choose or edit your pictures, but you shouldn't be sitting around waiting for your pictures to copy from the memory card to photo mechanic or for them to export from Lightroom. Always focus on maximizing your time in between, or at the very least, go get yourself a coffee or something while it's happening. So those are the three types of software and my editing workflow from beginning to end. If you found this helpful and you want to learn more, head over to speedyphotographer.com. This is my online photography school teaching you everything from which camera you should buy all the way down to how you can work a full-time job while building your photography business. And all of my training content is structured just like this. Quick, high value, and to the point with no fluff. I built Speedy Photographer in a way that was designed to relate specifically to you. I'm showing you things like how do you shoot a professional portrait in your basement? How do you incorporate video in your work to increase your income? How do you work a full-time job while scaling a successful photography business? And I know all of these things myself because I've gone through them. In any case, I appreciate you taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video.